record. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our Wednesday huddle. Jesse Mack coming at you here from Phoenix, Arizona, as we are building in just a few weeks away from our uh, uh, Las Vegas, a view from the edge event, which is probably one of the most significant events that we are going to have in the history of our company. It is the first view that we're going to be having here uh, in secret. Number one, number two is we are heading into prime time season for the world of secrets. So uh, many of you guys know, if you don't know what this kind of direction is going is, and then October, we're heading into November. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about prepping and preparing and where we're going and what's going on. But we have our amazing roadshow events. If you haven't been there already, we're talking about it every single week, secretroadshow.com secretroadshow.com has the most updated flyers information and data as to what events are still happening between now and our event in las vegas we had an incredible one here monday night in phoenix which is so exciting i do know that we've got uh, i think jefferson santos going out there to san antonio uh we've got uh i know uh, mazafra heading over to the east coast there again which is going to be incredible um but today i wanted to talk to you guys about a little bit different subject um than uh, we talked about but last week I want to talk to you guys about closing. We were talking about last week presenting and how to present, how to paint somebody into the picture, how to be able to present the opportunity where somebody can kind of see themselves already on the inside. If you missed last week's replay, make sure that you get it or you can find it. We upload it to pretty much uh, on, on YouTube. If you type in Team Elite or Jesse McPherson Team Synergy, or you should be able to find it. If you need it, let me know. We'll get you the YouTube channel. So I do post everything up on our websites. So you guys can get access to this information so you can watch it on replays or get it out to your organizations or promote it inside of your individual Facebook groups or your organizations. But last week when we talked about this, we talked about something that was really specific and really important when it came to going into understanding the process of why somebody is going to make the decision to join. And one of the biggest things is getting them to think of somebody they know and a couple people that they know that will buy or join. If they can think of a few people that they believe will buy or a few people that will join, you likely will get them to join, right? Now, the season we're going into, what is that? Well, we are going into holiday season. And for some of you, this will be your very first Black Friday in the world of secrets. Some of you have been with us for years, so you know the mania, the bananasness that's about to go down. Um, it is I, it's it's almost indescribable to explain what it's like to be a part of a secret Black Friday because it is just I mean it, it, honestly it's wild <laughs> it's, it really is um, and part of the reason why is this secret has learned how to capture the holiday dollar so what I want to do here time talking about the holiday dollar here what that really looks like is on these calls on Wednesdays I can tell you between now and Black Friday. On Wednesdays, I'm going to tell you what, this is probably one of the most important calls I believe that you can be on or your teams can be on, because I'm going to teach you 10 years of what I learned on how to capitalize on Black Friday and the shopping dollar. I'm not going to go through all the stats and details. I've got PowerPoints. I've got incredible stuff. But there is one statistic I want to give you. There were uh, well, a couple. So in 2019, I pulled these up last night. There were 93 million people that um, purchased on Black Friday, doing somewhere close to $7 billion in sales on Black Friday. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, it's called Black Friday. It's the day after Thanksgiving. And it's the reason why most retailers originally will go from being in the red on their ledger to the black, meaning become profitable. And that profitable day was where a lot of people would go out there. They would shop. They were looking for door bus deals they were looking for big discounts to kind of kick off the christmas season the holiday shopping season where people would be starting to purchase gifts so the retail has spent billions in advertising over the course of the last couple of decades preparing the American population and U.S. Canada. I know we got Boxing Day in Canada and a few other days that are important, but the pretty much the world has now found themselves in a habitual habit of looking for deals to shop on Black Friday. Now, why is this significant? The significance of it is the average American spent $400 on Black Friday, $400 on Black Friday. So why is that? Now, Maybe you aren't going to capture all 400 of those dollars because they have earmarked for something specific that they're looking for. Um, but one of the things that you're going to get 
is everybody has people on their list that they gotta buy something for. And when you get a chance to see our holiday specials, our uh, secret surprise boxes, when you get a chance to see our gifts with giveaways, when you get to see the extra stuff that's happening, and we're gonna teach you how to capitalize, to convert the Christmas dollar into secret cash. And we know how to do that. We've done it incredibly well. Statistically, this has been my best days of the year, not by some, by far. And um, not only that, my biggest month of the year being December every single year since the first year I joined Secret 10 years ago. And so the way you think about it is this, is all of us have 10 friends, uh, you know, just 10, let's just take 10, that are going to buy on Black Friday. This isn't a question of whether or not they're going to, they're going to purchase. So if they purchase, and let's just say they spend 200 bucks with you, which is very small when people see the gifts that Secret is going to be offering with the up to 75% off. So if that's 10 friends that spend $200, that's 2000 in QV. 2000 in QV that's going into your tree. So somebody's going like, how do I go to Royal Al in a day? Well, if you had, you know, two family members, okay, or two friends on your left team, two friends on your right team that do a 2000 in orders because they're buying on Black Friday, they're buying gifts, they're buying for their friends, they're buying for the people that they like and their love and their and their homes. You can see Royale in a day. If you can go Royale in a day, many people you'll see go silver in a day, gold in a day, platinum in a day. We're talking cycles of like, it's gonna be absolutely insane. So I'm super excited about that, but let's go back to the subject at hand here real quick and talk a little bit about closing. So when you're at the end of your presentations, what is the question that you ask people when they've seen information? And it's a very simple question. It's the question I've asked for 20 years now almost, which is, what did you like best? What did you like best? And it's a question I still ask today that almost every single, it's habitual now for me. So when I, they see the presentation, they see the information, what did you like best? Okay. When after that, right, you can ask, what did you like best? I want to find out where they got in this. Now, there are tons of different questions that you can ask at the end of the presentation. These are a few of them. I want to give you a few and you're going to find yourself more comfortable. Okay. Here's another one. So um, are you ready to get started? Now, that one's pretty assumptive, isn't it? <laughs> so, right? Are you ready to get started? Now, in the beginning, that one was a hard one for me to ask in the beginning, because I remember like the first few times I started asking, I was like, are you ready to get started? Right? And uh, obviously, my confidence level was not quite there yet in the very beginning. So, but what I want everybody here to be thinking about is as you're going out there, you're going to start progressing with this. What did you like best was an easy way, okay? Now, the other thing is this, is this say, so do you see yourself becoming an agent or do you see yourself becoming a customer? Write this down. This is what we call an alternative choice question. An alternative choice question that gives someone the option that both responses are fantastic, okay? So if someone says, oh, I see myself becoming an agent, I say, well, do you see yourself getting started with our, our basic set, 300, our middle set, our builder set, or do you get yourself see, your, see yourself getting started with our professional set? Where do you see yourself getting started? If someone says, I want to become a customer, great. Do you see yourself getting started with our skincare, our nutrition, or our club, or all three? Do you see yourself getting started with our skincare, our nutrition, our club, or all three, right? So what, what we're trying to find is this is questions are the answers. And I talk about this a lot, but overcoming objections. Closing is just a series of asking questions. Now, what I found is that the better presenting, the less I had to be good at closing. Now, at the end of closing, if I didn't know where somebody was at and they were giving me these objections and I didn't know really where they were, what I would ask them is a simple question, which is a scale of one to 10. So write this down in your notes. These are some things here to help you with some closing. So scale of one to 10. All right, so scale of one to 10. So uh, I'm looking at Monty right now, so I'll, I'll pick on him. So Monty, I'll be like, listen, if I, I couldn't kind of get a vibe, I couldn't get a really a read off of Monty. Is he really interested? Is he really not? I don't know where he's at, right? Because Monty's maybe in his head. He's thinking about it and, and I, don't, I can't be in his head with him. So I got to get him out of his head a little bit. But a lot of the times people are going to say things like, oh, I just need to think about it. And, and what you want to do is you want to find out what are they really thinking about? Because if they're just sitting with it, the chances of them getting through that process on their own is usually pretty slim, right? So we want to help get that information out. So if I asked them, I said, Monty, look, on a scale of one to 10, one being totally not interested, 10 being I'm ready to rock and roll. One being totally not interested, 10 being I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's get started right now. Where would you find yourself on that scale? So he's a seven, right? So Monty tells me he's a seven. I say, perfect. 
okay? So whatever he says is perfect. If he says he's a four, if he says anything under a five, I'm probably not going to go down the path of trying to continue overcoming objections to get him to a 10. Now, maybe, but probably unlikely. I'm gonna probably push that into customers and referrals, okay? Customer and referral from that standpoint. When I said, look, on a scale of one to 10, and he says he's a seven, I say, perfect. So what would, here's the follow-up question of that. What would have to happen to get you to a 10? Another way to ask the question is, what else would you need to know for you to become a 10? So what would have to happen to get you to a 10? And he says, well, you know, I would need to have this or this or this or this. And whatever it is, then guess what you do? You go figure that out to get him to a 10, right? So that was one of the things that kind of helped me when I just didn't really know what to do in a scenario like that. But when somebody's asking you a question, right? Or when someone is at the end of uh, finding out when they're getting started, one of the things that I love to do is this, is I kind of classify most people in one of two categories when they got started in our business. There are your joiners and there are your runners, okay? And what I mean by that is the people that are willing to join versus the people that are willing to run. A lot of the people in the very beginning of evaluating the business, what they're doing is this, is they're trying to figure out how this business is going to fit and or work in their life. And for most people, they really believe that they have to put a lot of emphasis, time, energy, money, resources into building, right? So what I want to do is I want to remove the fear of the commitment side of it. And what I want you to think about is the difference between going on a first date versus getting married, right? Do you guys understand that there's a different level of commitment that somebody is giving you, right? So if you're saying, hey, let's go on a date, let's see how it feels. Let's see if this is a good idea or not. Let's see if the feeling is kind of mutual and we can continue dating and we can find out whether or not we're meant to be together, right? So what happens in that is that people give an opportunity for them to basically go, okay, I'm feeling this out, right? But I'm willing to try. I'm willing to see where this leads to. So the reason I give that is there's kind of like two kids who jump into the pool. How many of you guys uh, know those kids where they first walk up to the pool, they put their toe in and they're like, ah, it's cold, you know, right? And they're like, ah, oh, mom, it's cold. And they're like, just get in, you'll be fine, right? So, and then they get their feet in and they're like, ah, and then they acclimate for a little while. You guys know what I'm talking about. And then they take their second step and they're like, ah, and they take their third step, ah, right? And then they finally get in the pool. And then there's a second type of kid. Some of you have these kids. Some of you are these kids, right? You know, and you get to the pool and you're like, <laughs> and your mom's like, stop running. And you're like, I'm not running, but you're really running. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, right? And you get to the deep end of the pool and it is just, oh, kaboom, right? So, and you're ready to go. Now, is it cold for both kids? The answer is yes, right? Now, I always ask people, what's the best way to get someone in the pool or get your kid in the pool? And a lot of, it's always funny because all the, the people that jump in are always like, jump in, right? Like, honestly, whatever gets them in the pool. Here's what I have found out that the majority of people, if the only option for getting in the pool is to jump into the deep end of the pool, meaning be fully committed, most people won't go. I know. So this is what a lot of you guys want. I know all of my A types, all of my super red personalities, all of just push them in, right? Look, I get it. I'm that guy too. But I found trying to throw people into the deep end of the pool. It's kind of like you guys have all seen that, like a person who doesn't really want to go in. And what you're doing is then they're like trying to like fight you off and like pull back. And they're like, because they're like, no, I'm, I'm not ready for all of that. I'm not ready for that level of commitment. I'm not ready for that level of Okay, so here's the thing that I need. I need to show people secret. That's my job, right? That's what we get paid to do. I need to show people secret. So where I find those people, the best people that are the people who know people, that warm market. So how do you stay in warm market, right? Every time I kept trying to get people to jump into the deep end of the pool. Now, I'm trying to get people to jump into the deep end of the pool, but I know that what, two out of 10, one out of 10 is really gonna be a, a deep end pool jumper. You guys get what I mean, right? So they're, they're going to be like that. So what do I do with those other eight out of nine that are like kind of scared? They're hesitant. They're not sure. I'm not going to keep selling them on the deep end of the pool once they've already tried to pull back when I tried to pull, pull them in. I'm going to take them around to the other side of the pool. And it's basically the conversation saying, listen, we're not getting married here. We're not committed to this. Let's just get your feet in. Let's just, let's just get, let's see how it feels. You know, let's just kind of, 
Yeah, so now I'm not even talking about the deep end. You know what? No deep end. You're not allowed to go to the deep end. Deep end is not for you. Totally get it, right? So here's what we want to do is this. is I, So $2,000 package, when somebody immediately is like, I don't even know if I can do this. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to keep trying to slam them in for $2,000. They're trying to figure out whether or not they think that this actually works or not, right? So no deep in, no deep in for the pool. Let's go over here. Let's go over here. Listen, I'm not asking you to be super committed. I'm not asking you to be like overly, like, let's just, let's go on a date. Let's go on a date. Let's just see how it feels, right? So let's get your feet in. How does that feel? So I'm trying, it's a, it's a process, right? Now, I, once I get them about ways deep, then you can kick them in. You guys get it, right? I'm totally fine with kicking them in once you get them off to like the first few steps. But the thing is this, is most of the people out there, that's what they're evaluating. They're evaluating time, they're evaluating energy, they're evaluating commitment. So what they're evaluating all is that stuff. So when a new person is looking at it, what I'm asking them is I'm saying, basically it's very simple. Listen, I am super excited about this and I'm going hundred miles an hour. Now you can go two miles an hour, totally cool. And I wanna help you with this. But the thing is this is, we, you know, some people, so who do we know? And that's going back to the original conversation. Look, let's give this a shot. Let's give it a try. Here's a great conversation with people. What do you really have to lose? What do you really have to lose? Most people paint worst case scenarios. So instead of avoiding that, because remember for most people, they're looking at the hope of gain, but what there's hesitant for them in uncertainty is, well, what do I got to lose? If you can paint worst case scenario and they're okay with that, they'll join. So what's worst case scenario? Somebody says, oh, I just, I don't really know. I'll say, well, let's, you know, let's look at this. Like, okay, what's worst case scenario? Let's say you sign up today and you spend what? $349 plus tax and shipping. Let's say, let's call 400 bucks all in for that pack. Now let's, now that is even somebody maybe taking two steps in. Maybe somebody's not even willing to say, maybe they're just getting in and they're buying a couple of our products. Again, I'm taking them through that journey because if I get them one product, they might fall in love with that one product and that truck two, might turn into two products, turn into three products, turn into four products, turn into whatever experience that I can give them that's going to give them something new that they can experience in the world of secret. Again, I'm not trying to get them into the deep end of the pool anymore. Do you guys understand that? As soon as somebody, I can, and you guys know what I'm talking about. As soon as somebody pulls back, then it's like, nope, let's go over to, let's go over the stairs. Let's, okay, let's go like this. Who, you know, who do you, who not, I'm not trying to be like, give me a list of a thousand people. You know, everybody on the planet. Let's talk to them. Look, they, no, I'm trying to go, who, should, like, who do you think would be the person that you think just loves skincare products or loves nutrition products or really is not? All I'm trying to get is one person. Oh yeah, my cousin, right? Okay, now we've got one person that we're thinking about, we're talking to, right? So getting them in on that, if let's say 400 bucks, right? If you're taking a look at a $300 pack, whether it's skincare, nutrition, or travel, whatever it is, a travel pack, and you're talking about your $49 uh, secret, and you're talking about your tax chip, call it under 400 bucks, okay? So let's say, all right, Monty, let's say you get started today, $400. Okay. So do you like the products? Now let's say Monty is, he's a nutrition guy. So he's getting the products. I say, so what you're doing is you're getting the products at the cheapest rate possible. So let's say you do this and you join, join. and let's say that it doesn't work out. Oops, sorry. I got uh, somebody unmuted and I got to figure out how to mute them. Nope. Um, I'm on my phone today. My computer is all packed up because I'm heading to the office for tours today, which is exciting. Um, but Monty says, uh, so he uses the products. I say, so Monty, look, here's the thing. It, let's say worst case scenario, we invite some people to come take a look at these products. And at the end of the day, you know, like nobody, like literally nobody is interested in these products. Now, obviously that would be like a weird scenario because they're the best on the market, organic, plant-based nutrition, like they really work. But let's just say worst case scenario, everybody's like, has no interest in these products. They not only have no interest in the skincare, I mean, in the nutrition, they have no interest in the skincare. None of them. None of them want to buy gifts on Black Friday. None of them want to buy holiday products. None of them want to travel more and save money on travel. Like nobody. They're all like, nada. You guys see how I'm painting this worst case scenario for him? So we're not really, so, because I'm not worried about worst case scenario. So worst case scenario is he goes, okay, all right. Okay. So if he can imagine worst case scenario, but you use all the products, Monty, and you get a good result. Are, 
from the products, meaning you maybe get some more strength, you get some loot, you get some better sleep, you get some better energy, and you use all the products. Did you really lose out? No. Okay. When you're a part of our business, 1099, a home-based business, actually the products you're purchasing, you can write off on your taxes this year. Did you know that? Yeah. So in other words, now let's say you don't even use all the products. Let's say you don't even use all the products, but these products are world-class products. Could you give them as gifts for the holiday for people? Yeah. So in other words, worst case scenario, you feel better, you look sexier, you write it off on your taxes, and you got some of your Christmas shopping done today. I mean, that's really worst case scenario, Monty. Come on. Let's just get your feet in. Let's see how it feels. Right. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking something in somebody where if I can give them worst case scenario. So is this helping? Does this make sense to you guys? All right. So when you're asking questions at the end of the presentation, all right, and uh, finding out where somebody is, what I'm trying to figure out is where is their belief level in this? Not now. Somebody doesn't have to be wildly committed to join. They don't need to have this monster why. They don't need to have, all they need is one reason, okay? Now, the one reason they join will be different than the one reason that they build or the one reason they stay or the one reason why they get committed or the one reason why they leave. It might be a totally different reason and that's okay. I don't need to have all those reasons to get a commitment from somebody for a couple hundred bucks. I mean, you guys got to remember here, it's a couple hundred dollars. Now, I might need to know a bigger reason for someone to come in at 2000 but those people are usually the ones that are the deep into the pool jumpers, right? They're very, they're, they want this, they get it. They're like, I want to do this. I want to know what I got to do. And it's like, listen, if you want to make as much as possible, as fast as possible, this is the best place for you to start in your business by far. You get the best discounts, the most products, and we can see that. But as soon as I get that, so I'm able to get more people in. Now I hit Monty and now Monty's in. Now, Monty is not in, in, you guys know this, like he's sort of in, like he, he's not in the pool. He's got the speed in, right? So you know what I want to do to keep Monty going is I want to find out who does Monty know? Because my goal is to help Monty sign up somebody before, so to recruit somebody on Monty's list before Monty quits, before he gets out of the pool, right? Because I don't really have to like, just because I got Monty enrolled doesn't mean that he's in. He's not in the pool yet. I just got his feet in the water, right? So, and my goal is to get him into the next feet down the water. And how do I get him in the feet of the water is he gets one of his friends to get their feet in the water, right? Now, if I can find somebody in Monty's list that wants to jump into the deep end of the pool, then Monty's like, oh, I guess I'll get in. You know what I mean? Like if your friend jumps in, they're like, this is great. And they're playing around in the deep end. You're like, oh, I guess I'll get in now. So, but I want you to have this visual. So you kind of understand of where we're going to be taking people and that you don't have to close. All you have to do is close people to the next step. And that next step of closing them is not asking for monster commitments. It's just to get in a little bit. Just to get in a little bit. So just to get in a little bit. Just to get in a little bit. Just to get in a little. Let's just get you in a little bit more. Let's let's get you in a little bit more. Let's how, how does that feel? Like, listen, this is not that bad. I mean, listen, does this, are you have to do a lot of changes, a lot of craziness in order for you to be able to do this in your life? No, this is simple stuff. We've got this, right? And what it's going to allow people to do is this is because I'm, if somebody's concerned about, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to, I'm, I'm not trying to get them to do everything. It's just get them on their first step. So these are a couple of things at the end of the presentation. So I love, hey, did everything make sense? What did you like best? Do you see yourself getting started? Are you ready to get started? So, right, what's holding you back? These are great questions. What's holding you back from getting started? Somebody says, I need to think about it. Well, what are your concerns? These are my questions that I ask people. What are your concerns? So listen, if, if there was a way that you could be able to do this business without that being an issue, would you get started? If we could find a way for this to happen, you know, somebody says, well, I don't know, da, 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 da. well, let's look, at, let's look at this. Okay, best case scenario, you sign up and this happens, this happens, this happens. Worst case scenario, you sign up and this happens. I mean, is it really like, is that really a bad, you know, I get it. I know that wouldn't be the result you would want from joining, but it's not really that bad of a result if it doesn't work out. 
So now people are going, okay, if I'm comfortable with it not working out, I'm willing to go on the date because worst case scenario, I get free food. <laughs> so stupid. Um, so my analogies are strange today. So, uh, but is this making sense? Are you guys getting this stuff? Okay. So all the women are like, yeah, I got it, right? <laughs> so go. anyway, as you guys are going out there closing is this, is you got to remember is that whether or not, so if I'm sitting with Monty, I want Monty to join, but it's more valuable. Well, let's put it this way. If Monty joins, what do I want to do? I want to meet the people he knows. That's what I want. If Monty doesn't join, what do I want to do? Meet the people he knows. So in other words, my goal is not to get Monty. And when you stop trying to get that person, it changes up because then they realize that you're in it together because you're going, Monty, my thing is this. I, we need to show more people secret. You know people, and I want to show secret. Let's put those things together, and let's make this thing happen, right? Because then Monty is like, we're not trying to get that person. So if I'm always in the mindset of getting to the next person, what you're going to find is more people are going to feel like you guys are in it together, not you're trying to get them. Okay. So, cause I'm not trying to get Monty. What's the point of it? If I get Monty and Monty doesn't introduce me to people, then what was the point? Right. I would rather have Monty not sign up and introduce me to people than just sign up. He's more valuable to me. He is, he's more valuable to me if I can get into Monty's network. So if that's really what I want and people know that, so it's just going like, listen, we want to show these people. Now, we're not here to convince. We're not here to beg. We just want to introduce them to these world-class products. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to like it. Some people are going to be like, man, you know? So, but at the same time, <coughs> here's what we know. <coughs> there are people out there like me, people out there like you, that the minute they try these products, they are going to be secret lovers for life, right? So when they become secret lovers for life, that is an income that can be there for you for life. Okay. So if it's kind of like I'm taking them on that journey and taking them with me, then it's like, here's what we're doing together. Here's where we're going together. And so I hope this helps with you guys. I've got to get into the car here and get over to my tours that I got for today. But just a few tips. Here's the thing I'm going to let you guys know. We are going into the biggest season of the year. Just to give you some numbers that are absolutely outrageous. Uh, my first Black Friday in secret, I think I made like $400 for the day. It's not, which is good. This is not a bad day. It's a pretty good day, right? So if you never made 400 bucks in a day in your part-time, part-time business, sweet. The next Black Friday, I made $7,000 on Black Friday. On the day, on the, yeah. The third one, I made $17,000 on Black Friday. And we learned how to capitalize on Black Friday to the point where we were maxing out the comp plan and earning $25,000, $30,000, $40,000 on Black Friday. Last Black Friday, I made more in one day than I used to make in seven years teaching dance classes. It's outrageous. So, and the reason why is everybody shops. So if you have 10 people on your left team and 10 people on your right team, just think about these numbers, 10 on your left, 10 on your right, and they each get 10 friends that are not even agents. They're just going to shop on Black Friday with them. And they do the, and they only spend 200 of their $400 on average they're going to spend, right? So that would be 2,000 QV per person. That's 20,000 QV left, 20,000 QV right from having 10 people that have 10 friends that just buy gifts on Black Friday. That's platinum in a day. And that's not even counting what's going to happen the next three weeks after that into the holiday season where we actually buy even more products for holidays. Number one. And number two, we will be launching, I'm spilling the beans here, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to be launching our next Club Fit Challenge, 60-day challenge, January 1st, 2021, or 2022. New year, new you. We're going to take all the marketing material we got from this one to sell the next one. And people are going to be buying their nutrition sets in the middle of December in order to capitalize on being able to start the challenge on January 1st, which means we're going to go into ridiculous skincare buying sales to holiday purchasing sales to I want to lose weight sales to getting into the new year to heading into the greatest experience as the world is starting to open up. And you guys are going to see what's going to happen with Club Secret, with the team trips that are coming, with the extra escapes that are coming, with the experiences at as the world is starting to open up more. I can tell you what, going from this next 
six month run with us coming from the view is going to be life changing. And I do not say that lightly. The wave is coming. Get in the board and start your paddling. And we will see you guys on the next call. Jesse Mack signing off here, Phoenix, Arizona. Bye for now. Thank you.